Hello and welcome back to the latest Test Young News with me, Vanessa. Cambodia's police breaks up protests over alleged China military base. Cambodian security guard breaks up a small protest near the Chinese embassy opposing alleged plans to boost Beijing's military presence in the country. According to live streaming by local media and Reuters witnesses, after brief scuffles, city security guards carried three protesters to a nearby police pickup truck. One protester shout respect the Paris Peace Agreement, some other protesters waving Cambodian flags and taking photographs of police forces at the scene as the police officers with a loud hailer give the group five minutes to disperse. The Cambodian government repeatedly deny reports that China reaches a secret deal to let it places forces at the Riam naval base, saying that hosting foreign forces is against Cambodia's constitution. Phnom Penh police spokesman San Sok Se Ha says those detained taken in for questioning since the rally had not been given a permit. CNRP's former vice president Mu So Chua says the protests are part of a wider rally organized by the dissolved opposition Cambodian National Rescue Party to mark the 29th anniversary of the Paris Peace Agreement ending Cambodia's civil war. Two environmental activists took the initiative to reduce plastic waste in Bali. Two sisters kick off an initiative by Buy Plastic Bags on hope to reduce the local communities about plastic waste on the resort island where they call home in Bali, Indonesia. Every single day we are inspired to get back out there on the front lines because of our love for the environment and the natural world around us. And I think this is unique to our generation. All around the world, our generation is at the front lines, fueled by passion, but also because we know the urgency that we have to take action now. So can you imagine my sister and I at 10 and 12 years old, we said, enough, we're going to do something about it. And that's really where bioplastic bags came, without a business plan, without a strategy. But again, that pure passion and just the knowledge that we cannot wait until we're older to start taking action. Their activities are inspired by the great stories of Nelson Mandela, Lady Diana and Mahatma Gandhi in school. They also have given talks in the United Nations and participate in many international environment events where single-use plastics have been banned since June 2019. I think what inspired us to really start on our activism journey and to start Bye Bye Plastic Bags was really where we were raised, here on the island of Bali. It's beautiful, people call it, you know, the Paradise Island. And because of that, we were constantly out in nature, in the rice fields, mountains. But sadly, even at 10 and 12 years old, we could see that no matter where we went, there was plastic constantly surrounding us. You know, it's not rocket science to see it's a problem. And it's not only a problem here in Bali, in, in Indonesia, it's a problem globally. And so we thought, you know, what's someone going to do about this? And I think you sometimes forget that you can actually be that someone. According to the sisters, climate change is the utmost urgent issues in the modern world. And they urge the policy makers to take swift action to tackle the problem. Banning single-use plastic bags should not have taken six years. Uh, implementing renewable energies, empowering people with the access to these solutions. Those are the actions that we need to see on a mass scale. And again, it comes back to respecting and living in harmony with the environment. And change is happening far too slowly. We need to see more leaders, more ambitious goals being made from people in positions of power. And I guess that's where young people come in because we recognize that, we can feel that. And that's why we come up on these panel discussions, why we come up in these conference rooms demanding that these changes are bigger, that these goals are more ambitious. We need to see the bar set a lot higher and a lot sooner. Challenge to make things really happen was born. It took another. The sisters have since started a new movement which aims to connect and empower like minded youths across the world. Never let anyone tell you that you're too young to make a difference or you're too young to do anything. You have to wait until you grow up, get your degree, get your diploma, and then you can maybe, if you feel like it, make a difference. You have so much power in you. And we are the living example that kids can do things. Kids can change the world. Because we believe that us kids may only be 25% of the world's population, but we are 100% of the future. At the World Economic Forum, Indonesian Coordinating Minister of Maritime and Investment Affairs, Luhut Panjaitan says, Indonesia is planning to cut marine plastic debris by 70% within the next five years and aim to achieve a plastic pollution-free Indonesia by 2040. Local media quote 2019 data from the Industrial Ministry shows that Indonesia, a country listed as the second worst offender for polluting 
the world's oceans with plastics, consume at least 17 kilograms of plastic waste per capita every year. Palan Street cooks join in protests against government. Regarding the protests that have started since three months ago, a group of the Tallinn street food vendors with name CIA arrive at the protest site before police and other protesters. We have to follow the news very closely. We form a group after we got the nickname CIA from the protesters. We are the mobile fishbowls. The sellers are ready to move in an instance and use their mobile phones to scrutinize messages from the protest groups, which only announced protest site at the last minute to confuse police. As I arrived, I can see that they are already here. They came here even before us. The other hawker says the protests have a bad impact on their business. Therefore, they decide to join the protest against the government. I wasn't really selling very well, so I decided to come to the protest site because there are usually a lot of people and I find that it was okay. Tens of thousands of people to take the streets, keep in protest against the government and the monarchy. Three deaths and 28 people injured in the explosion at a gas company in Thailand. The public company limited PCL gas transmission line at Samut Prakan, southeast of Bangkok, killed three people and injured 28 others. Public company limited in statement says PTT joined local rescue team to bring the wound to the hospital. Video from the scene show flames leaping dozens of meters in the air and a large cloud of smoke hanging high above the facility. The church remains of the houses and cars are also be seen. PTT says the fire bring under control and that the gas going into the pipeline had been stopped. Taiwan called for China to release 12 people from Hong Kong. Hundreds of people rallies in Taiwan's capital to call for China to release Hong Kongers who was arrested at sea by mainland authorities as part of a global campaign to support the pro-democracy movement in the financial hub. The main reason that we came here today is to oppose this vicious regime of the Chinese Communist Party. All parts of the world have been affected, including Hong Kong and the 12 missing Hong Kong people. Besides the 12, there are also many brothers and sisters in Hong Kong who went missing, forced to jump off a building, killed or gang raped. These were all caused by the tyranny of the Chinese Communist Party. It took away freedom in Hong Kong. Today in Taiwan, we have to step forward to support Hong Kong, because Hong Kong's today is Taiwan's tomorrow. Our Taiwan will become Hong Kong if we don't step forward. The 12 were arrested on August 23rd for alleged illegal entry into mainland China after setting off from Hong Kong in a boat bound for Taiwan amid a crackdown by Beijing on pro-democracy activists in the former British colony. Hong Kong Security Bureau says all 12 were suspected for committing crimes including manufacturing or possessing explosives, arson and rioting in Hong Kong. Meanwhile, the authority says 10 of them are on bail and not allowed to leave Hong Kong. The plight on protesters, however, has piled up pressure on Taiwan government and strain is already poor ties with Beijing, which ramp up military activities near Taiwan. Britain and Japan sign first trade deal. Britain and Japan formally signed a trade agreement, marking the United Kingdom's first big post-Brexit deal on trade, as it continues to struggle to agree on a deal with its closest trading partners in the European Union. How fitting it is to be in the land of the rising sun, to welcome in the dawn of a new era of free trade. This is the first new free trade deal to be agreed since the UK once again became an independent trading nation. It provides British businesses with a gateway to Asia Pacific. Its ambitious digital provisions affirm our status as technology superpowers, and it paves the way for accession to the Trans-Pacific Partnership, a group of 11 Pacific nations, which the UK already has £112 billion worth of trade with. Meanwhile, the Japanese Foreign Minister says today is an important day to both countries to maintain supply and hopes to reach the negotiation ties. To this day, many Japanese companies have expanded their business to the UK as the gateway to the Europe continental. 
It is important to maintain the supply chain between the UK and the European Union even after the UK's withdrawal from the European Union. Japan has high hopes that an agreement is reached soon on negotiations between the UK and the European Union on its future partnership. The signing comes after Trust and the Japanese Foreign Minister Toshimitsu Motegi reached a broad agreement in September. Britain says the deal meant 99% of its exports to Japan will be tariff-free and that it could increase trade by 15 to point billion pounds or 19.9 billion US dollar in the long run, compared with 2018. The A380 airline restaurant staff serves meal for customers who cannot travel. Due to the coronavirus pandemic restrictions, people are not allowed to travel abroad. In Singapore, hundreds of people flock to the Changi Airport in order to eat food at the pop-up restaurant of the A380 Jets, since Singapore's limit people to travel in and out Singapore. After checking at the departure lobby, the customers are escorted by the airline staff and allocate seats at the restaurant's A380 to take a special signature menu of the Singapore Airlines. This is really good. It's a new experience. The airline chief affirms the restaurant is part of the National Curious Initiative to entertain customers who are unable to travel by COVID-19 and also to keep generating income. Most of the Singapore airline planes have been grounded since the outbreak. So today we have two aircraft, so we're catering for about 900 people uh, in total. And of course it's a multiple course, so uh, if you're in the economy cabin and premium economy, you have a beautiful three course uh, lunch and uh, dinner for those attending this evening. And of course in uh, sweets we have a wonderful selection of uh, caviar and the satay through the lobster thermidor and then uh, you know, several courses right through to dessert and cheese. So um, you know, there's more than enough food and uh, of course a beautiful beverage selection uh, accompanying that through, uh, through the experience today. So looking forward to uh, you know, bringing some Singapore Airlines hospitality back, uh, you know, back to the sky, but you know, we're on the ground obviously. But uh, the 380 uh, dining experience will be a wonderful, uh, wonderful journey for many, many people today. To keep in line with safety measures, everyone requires to undergo temperature screening before boarding. And safe distancing measures meant customers are seated in groups of up to five with adequate space in between groups. The meals range from Singapore dollar 53 and 50 cents or US dollar 40 per person in economy to Singapore dollar 642 or US dollar 480 for a sweet class meal, which includes champagne and other beverages. Singapore reports 40 new infections of 11 which are imported cases. 12 fishermen missing by storm typhoon in Philippines Island. Disaster official says a strong typhoon lashes the southern part of the Philippines' main Luzon island overnight, dumping heavy rains, toppling power lines and leaving at least 12 fishermen missing. There are no immediate reports of casualties. Typhoon Malove packing 125 km or 77 miles per hour wind speeds and gusts of up to 150 km per hour caused flooding and prompt forced evacuation orders for tens of thousands of people. Molave is the 17th typhoon to hit the Philippines, follows the tropical storm Saudel, which caused widespread flooding in Quezon province in the Calabarzon region southeast of the capital Manila. Molave should exit the Philippines and is head towards Vietnam, where Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc issues an urgent warning to provinces and cities in its path to prepare. Vietnam's government says the province needs to ready plans for evacuating nearly 1.3 million people. South Korea Medical Association says government must suspend a flu vaccine program. The South Korea's Medical Association says the government should suspend a flu vaccine program after killed 13 people who received a shot in recent days. Health authorities says they have found no direct links between the deaths and the vaccines. Choi Dae-zip, president of the Korean Medical Association, says at the news conference that the inoculation program should be put on hold until the government secure the safety of the vaccines. We advise to suspend current influenza vaccine program for one week to ensure its safety. During the suspension period, we ask the government to find casual links between the death cases and the vaccination and find evidence of vaccines and the inoculation program safety. According to the Korea Disease Control and Prevention Agency, in these cases at least 11 of the 13 deaths, including a 17-year-old boy, are part of the campaign to inoculate 19 million teenagers and senior citizens for free. 
South Korea ordered a fifth more flu vaccines this year to ward off what it calls a twindemic or the prospect that people with the flu develop coronavirus complication and overburden hospitals in winter. Protesters continue protests against President Joko Widodo over new labor law. Several thousand students and workers protest in Indonesia's capital Jakarta against President Joko Widodo's about a new jobs law. The latest in the series of rallies opposing the legislation that the government says is needed to attract investment. For us, our actions are still just going down to the road to push for the cancellation of the law. But as far as I know, other unions have already taken action to file a judicial review to the Constitutional Court and there are other labor unions doing the same too. Dress in yellow, blue and green jackets, denoting their universities, students demand the president, widely known as Jokowi, to revoke the so-called omnibus bill that critics say harms labor rights and the environment. The protest joined with labor groups mark one year since Jokowi was inaugurated for a second term in office. The flagship jobs legislation, a revision of more than 70 existing laws that was passed on October 5th, is designed to remove long-standing impediments to doing business by cutting the red tape easing restrictions on foreign investment and boosting labor market competitiveness. The government says it will lead to widespread employment generation. But trade unions, student groups, academics and civil society groups says the legislation reduces protections for workers, including those on minimum wages, severance pay and maternity benefits, and weaken environmental protection. And that's all for today's episode. Have a lovely weekend with your loved ones, and we will see you again.